Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the November meeting of the Germantown Planning Commission. I see we have a fairly good crowd tonight, so uh, hopefully we'll uh, have some entertaining and some uh, information for everyone. Uh, I think the, if we're ready to begin, can we call the roll? Here. Mr. Saunders? Here. Mr. Hernandez? Alderman Owens? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Chairman Harless? Here. And we have a quorum. Uh, do we have copies of the agenda for everyone? They're on the podium. If anyone would like a copy of the agenda, feel free to come up and help yourself. It's here on the podium. I would also ask uh, if anyone has a cell phone, uh, please put it on mute just so we don't get interrupted. The first order of business tonight will be the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Are there any additions, deletions to the minutes? If not, is there a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Alderman Owens? Chairman Harless? Yes. And the minutes are approved. The second order of business is going to the first item on the agenda. Mr. Ross. Thank you, Chairman Harless. Thank you, Chairman Harless. First item on our agenda this evening, 5A at 2130 Exeter Road. It's an application for approval of revised preliminary and final site plan. As you can see from the map, this is in the Central Business District as part of the Germantown Collection Shopping Center on the north side of Poplar and east side of Exeter Road. Uh, just within our central business district. This area was part of the central business district smart growth small area plan in 2007 and zone T5 in 2008 as part of the city's first smart code application. The proposal in front of you tonight is for uh, a facade improvement on the existing Kroger building and breaking this up into multiple retail bays and then for a 7,000 square foot building to be built on the southwest corner of the site. This is the existing entrance drive into the site. Uh, there is one warrant associated with this, the rear line of the building. Uh, Per the code, should be no more than 40 feet from the rear of the property line, but uh, the rear of the existing lot here is part, the 40 feet is part of a 60 foot landscape buffer between the building and the property line and the neighbors on Sonning. Uh, so that I can say this early and often, that buffer is not going to be touched, the wall is not going to be touched as part of any of the improvements to this area. This uh, site plan that uh, illustrates the warrant also illustrates uh, the majority of the work on the site. They will be doing uh, some improvements to alleviate a drainage issue in the northwest corner of the site, uh, improving the flow and modifying the facade of the existing Kroger building so that it works with the rest of the improvements that Bear Properties has done to Germantown Collection and then building this 7,000 square foot out parcel building. 
These are the renovations being proposed to the existing building. As you can see, it uh, brings it into line with the both colors and architecture of the existing Germantown collection, leaves the loading docks in their existing format. This is moving south uh, to the corner near Goulds. Uh, this is looking at the side of the building, the loading dock, and then looking at the back side of the building. This is the north side of the building and then south side of the building. The out parcel building, Again, 7,000 square feet with entrances on the north and south side. Uh, on the street side, uh, this is the side that would be facing Exeter. This is the side that would be facing the parking lot. And then the uh, north side of the building, excuse me, the south side of the building and north side of the building. This is just a little bit more detail on the architecture that was within your packet. The street screen, as you can see, extends down the frontage of the proposed out parcel building and does conform to the smart code requirements. This hasn't changed much from the multiple iterations that you've seen. Just to give you some basic numbers as it relates to this site, uh, we are looking at 5.3 acres. Uh, the building footprint is 67,313. The existing building exclusive of the common area is 48,244 square feet. Again, with a 7,000 square foot out parcel building, the out parcel building will be approximately 25 feet tall uh, with an included parapet wall to screen the utilities and uh, other infrastructure that'll be on the roof of the building. Uh, this, again, just touching back modifications to the front, no modifications to the back. Uh, as they are recruiting tenants, uh, they are looking at tenants that will receive a lower delivery volume than Kroger ever received. One of our previous applicants on this provided a transportation study that showed that the average grocery store receives approximately 20 deliveries a day uh, for the various uh, things that have to come into a grocery store from produce to bread, Coke to beer, all the necessities of life. Uh, uh, with the deliveries that and the tenants that they're talking to, they're looking at five or less deliveries a day for the particular tenants. So uh, a significant reduction in deliveries to this site. They will be utilizing the existing dumpster enclosure and a second dumpster enclosure for the out parcel building which will be divided into two bays is shown on your plan. And then finally, at the request of the Smart Code Review Committee, they did provide a rendering of the view looking uh, north on Exeter Road as you would be turning into the building area. So this is uh, the screen walls and the slope that they will be creating up into the parking lot that will also facilitate pedestrian movement from the out parcel building to the larger building uh, that's being modified with the two to three retail bays. Uh, the applicant is here with their team and staff is also open to any other questions that you might have. Commissioner, com Commissioner's questions of staff. If not, is the applicant here and would like to make a presentation? While Mr. Parker comes up, I would like to add that uh, they are providing 202 parking spaces and 202 parking spaces, three per thousand square feet is what is required by the code. Thank you. My name is Blair Parker with Blair Parker Design, 5159 Wheelis Drive, uh, Memphis 38117. We have a full presentation for you if you would like to hear it. I understand you have a full evening. Um, um, Did you bring dinner? Pardon me? Did you bring dinner? No, I did not. I'm afraid <laughs> not. But a great part of the presentation actually has already been, been taken yeah. care of. Uh, here with me this evening is Eric Morrison with Bear Properties, uh, Brandon Doss with Blair Parker Design, and Barry Bird of Barry Bird Architecture. So we can answer any questions, hopefully, that that you have of us. I will, I would like to make just a couple of points and that is the 60 foot buffer that's at the rear of the property. I know that Mr. Ross covered this. It is not being touched. 
uh, lights at the rear of the, the uh, old Kroger building, if you will, a vacated Kroger building. Those are being changed out to be more efficient lights and will certainly not project light near as far. So we really believe that we've protected the, the neighborhood very, very well. Uh, we were asked in the subcommittee meeting to look in, at the transition from Exeter Road up to the building itself. We have prepared uh, a, um, a model of that. We have views for you to look at. We can get into some details if you would like to. One of the items that we were asked at that time was to move the building back away from the sidewalk a little bit and to provide some landscape area to help soften the wall. We've done that. Uh, so I believe we've, we've addressed everything that, uh, that was asked of us at the subcommittee meeting. So, I'll Commissioners, let me ask the question. Do you want more detail? Or? I just have one question about the parking, but I'm not finding more detail. Just doing the math real quick on the, the parking space. It looks like you have plenty. For some reason, I remember before we were tight on parking spots in the proposed plan prior to this. And now we're, is that correct? Or am I we, were, we, we were tight, but we met the minimum. In this case, the out part or the out building, which is 7,000 square feet, is smaller than the previous building. Okay. So the previous application you saw was actually a larger building. This has been downsized some. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. All right. It, it, um, and with that question, one of the one of the items we were asked to look at was for shopping carts, and we have two locations on the site plan for shopping carts. Um, the tenants that are in discussions at this moment, that's really all that would be needed. But realizing that we are talking, or, or Bayer Properties is talking to different tenants, so in the event uh, we need uh, to add one or two more areas of parking carts, we would put those in the landscape islands. We still meet the landscape number, the required landscape number, and that would provide us that additional room to put the additional cart locations. Yeah, I think my math, I've got 36 extra spots you've got there if we needed more cart pass. I, I just couldn't figure out, you help me out, that the new retail is smaller than the previous yes. one. All right, thank you. Mr. Pikin. Uh, Mr. Parker, we, uh, at the subcommittee, we didn't have this rendering. And so, as you pointed out, this is one of the requests that we had made just to see the relationship of the building to Exeter. And I've just, I mean, I've got to say, I, I mean, I, I'm encouraged that hopefully the project is moving forward. You know, hopefully this building will move forward. Um, it's been before us multiple times. One of the fundamental principles of smart code and smart growth and one of the fundamental principles of moving these buildings closer to the streets and closer to the sidewalks is to encourage pedestrian access and, and encourage a more uh, pedestrian scaled relationship of sidewalks to buildings and to storefront. And if I look at that, that's just a fortress. I mean, I know you've got a lot of great, I know you have a lot of great change to have to deal with and that's often difficult to accommodate with ADA standards and access standards and so on and so forth, but that's just severe to me. I mean, I, I just don't, I, I don't, I mean, with all those walls and, and the way it is built up like that, I, I just, it doesn't look pedestrian friendly to me at all. And I, I, I don't, I don't know what you do about that, I, you know, I remember the other iteration with the building on the north end of the site. You know, there was the end of the building that w that abutted Exeter, but the front of the building fronted on the parking lot. So you really didn't have this kind of condition. But to me, that's just incredibly severe. Um, it's illuminating. We didn't really have this in the subcommittee to look at. Um, I, I don't mind the architecture. I mean, the architecture, and I know the intent is to marry an architectural aesthetic with this building to the improvements to the existing buildings, the old Kroger store and whatnot. But is there anything, is this, it, surely there's another way of going about that. I mean, <laughs> I 
that's just one opinion, but it just doesn't, it, it doesn't, to me, it just looks like a fortress. Uh, as, as a designer, I believe that the, the wall is intimidating as you walk up to the, to the building itself, but I believe it's the wall that does that. Um, so as, as when you're on the sidewalk of Exeter <clears throat> Road and walking up towards the building, you're up against this tall retaining wall. For me, I, I find that a little intimidating. So we asked the question internal to our, our design group, what happens if we change that wall down to a fence? Understanding we have a patio outside the building, if we were to make a portion of what we now see as the wall, if we made a portion of that, um, if we made a portion of this a fence, and while we don't have our rendering totally complete, we brought copies of, uh, of what it, the difference it would look like in the event we were to change out a part of that. So if you'll give me a moment, I'll, I'll grab those. Well, those. I mean, because that, that would help, I think, immensely. I mean, right now, you can't even see that people are sitting up on the patio up there. I believe it would, yes. I, personally, I believe it would. Um, I, I, smart, to me, smart that helps code. A lot. Was, <laughs> pardon me? That helps a lot. <laughs> Mr. Sanders? But, uh, automatically, you see, you see that. I, I continue. That's the first thing I looked at. I was thinking, could you bring those walls down to grade and put some type of railing system along there that would be uh, much more desirable? And I think is, that's exactly what you did. And by, you know, you really, on the rendering here, you really don't take in consideration, looking at your landscaping plan here, you haven't really filled in what you're doing with your landscaping. So. Some of that would take some of the harshness, but really, if you drop those tops down, as you're showing here on these uh, uh, rendering here, it, it to me that just totally yeah, takes man. away the, you know. Well, it takes the mass away right. from what we're and, seeing. And it makes it more inviting for someone to come up to it. I, I, that was I agree with Mr. Bacon that 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 was my first thought is that, geez, I hope I make it up there, you know, type thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we know this is that that the sidewalk itself from Exeter to the front door of the building, which would be up, a, up a, a ramp or a sloped sidewalk, we meet accessibility standards for, uh, for ADA. Matter of fact, it, it will go all the way from that building to the vacated Kroger building, so we're providing ADA access all the way that direction, and then you can continue to go south into the existing uh, shopping center. So we, we've met that. Personally, I believe that, that the wall is tall and it's a little intimidating. And here I stand six foot one, it's intimidating to me. So my wife, who is not quite as tall, it's more intimidating for her. I personally prefer the, the, the railing. Commissioners, other comments? <clears throat> Just before, I, so I, I would strongly encourage more of this approach and, and it probably still could use a lightening up. I mean, the columns are heavy and it's, you know, you, you've got the railing and it opens it up. And I think if you just maybe took it the next step and just opened it up, I think it would just, the relationship to the street and to, to the intent of what we're trying to do with smart code, okay. would, it just would work better. So, Mr. Parker, I think you got some <clears throat> good feedback here. Good. Thank so. you. And I apologize for not having this sooner. We, we actually prepared this today and that's why you don't have it electronically on the screen. Mr. Ross, do you have a comment? Not on this particular issue. Okay. And uh, we do have approvals from both the DRC and Economic Development because yes, they're on the subcommittee. Do. So they both uh, bless this also. <coughs> Very good. Mr. Parker, unless someone has a question, thank you, sir. Appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Chairman Harless, I'd like to uh, add just a couple things. Please. Uh, two things for the record. Uh, I think it does bear mentioning that this particular location of this out parcel development was drawn out in the 2007 smart code plan. So this truly meets the spirit and intent of the plan. This was called the Kroger block and uh, looked at 
adding out parcels in front of the existing building and utilizing the existing building to regenerate and add life back to this uh, particular shopping center. I think that uh, going under a similar ownership with Bayer Properties being in control of both uh, parts of Germantown collection, that also helps to solidify the shared parking agreement that exists. When uh, Commissioner Clark brought that up, it reminded me that there is a shared parking agreement to these two parcels, but with Bayer Properties being uh, in charge of both of the parcels, that makes that a little bit stronger than just a, a legal piece of paper. And then finally, I just wanted to add for the record the specific section that the warrant calls to uh, within the code, and that's 23774E that the, uh, related to the front setback, and that's that the maximum front yard setback shall be 40 feet from the rear property line as illustrated in your packet and uh, Mr. Parker's application to the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this project? Seeing none, hearing none, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak against this project? If you will, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. My name is Frank Bluestein, 2147 Sonning Drive, and I'm speaking for several of the neighbors we back up to the project. Um, I, I'm not really against the project. We, we have no issue with, with the project. Our only issue would be if there are, if there are any changes to the back of the building. And I think what I heard was that there's not. But, um, you know, our biggest concerns when we heard about this, uh, you all, I think, know there, we had a covenant with the city when they built that shopping center. Um, I, and I have copies of that here that limited where the dumpsters could be and the time that, that traffic could come in the back and cleaning and all of that. We would just like to be assured that those guarantees will still be in effect from the shopping center because we literally back up to it. I don't think there's any other development in Germantown that was ever done again like that. And so the alderman gave us those guarantees. Um, our biggest concern would be the dumpster, but I heard that they're not adding any more dumpsters and it would also be um, the parking is, we, I didn't know if there was any, if they were going to add any parking back there or not, or would the parking stay the same would be a question. And then the final question would be, as it is now, the only loading area for Kroger was that loading dock that you said was going to stay there, and that's great, but will there be other doors in the back where people will be coming in and out of those since they've subdivided it into three parcels? So I guess it's that question in the parking would be the concern. And again, not, not against the project as it is. We, we just would like answers to that. Thank you, Mr. Bluestein. Yes, sir. Mr. Ross, do you want to respond? Sure. What I've pulled up is the back of the building, and they aren't modifying the existing back, and as noted, they're not modifying the loading dock. Uh, there will be a common hallway, common space uh, put into the building so that the access can go from the loading dock and into uh, the different bays that they're creating so that all loading is done internally, similar to the way that uh, an uh, indoor mall works with their delivery system. You've got those internal corridors that you don't get to unless you work at the mall. And so this would operate the same way from deliveries. Deliveries could also be done to the front side. Uh, as mentioned, the tenants that they're working with are seeing a significantly lower volume of deliveries than your standard grocery store at 60,000 plus square feet. Uh, they're not adding any more uh, loading doors as indicated on the plans. The covenants are still in place. They haven't asked to change those covenants that ride along with the land, and they're not adding any more parking spaces to the rear of the building. Mr. Bluestein, I think you're going to be pleased. We, we are. We appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate your comments and, and concerns, but I think... Uh, Knowing what time Kroger gets their deliveries, which is four and five o'clock in the morning, I'm sure you're aware of that. Uh, 
I think with the uh, the new tenants in there who are going to be getting deliveries at 8 and 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be a big difference in going from 20 trucks to 5 at the max. I think that's, a, be, that's an estimation. I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Seeing none, hearing none, commissioners, are there any other questions of staff? If not, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, um, there is a smart code review committee report. Uh, the smart code review committee met on October 25th, 2017 and recommended that a perspective illustrating the connection between Exeter and the proposed building be provided for the planning commission meeting and that additional planting be provided along the Exeter Road frontage to minimize the impact of the retaining wall. Smart Code Review Committee recommended moving this item to the November 7th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting agenda, subject to the committee's discussion, comments of staff, and revisions presented by the applicant. Letters of recommendation from the DRC and the ECD representatives are included in this report. The, and I guess a question, Mr. Chairman, I should know by now, but the first action, the first proposed motion should be the warrant, correct? Mr. Harris, warrant first or, or main motion? Main motion main first. Motion. Okay. So the main motion is to approve the revised preliminary and final site plan for the 2130 Exeter Holdings project subject to the board's discussion, staff comments in the report and the plans filed with the application. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Bain. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Hernandez. Yes. Alderman Owens. Yes. Mr. Saunders. Yes. Chairman Harless. Yes, and the motion is approved. Now we go to the warrant. Mr. Chairman, the proposed motion the warrant is to approve a warrant to 23-770.4.E to allow the proposed outbuilding to be more than 40 feet, approximately 616 feet from the rear property line. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting to approve the warrant request uh, primarily because it, it, it needs to be, we need to approve it to allow the building to be constructed as close as, as it is to Exeter to accomplish the goals of Smart Code. So I'm voting yes. Mr. Clark. Uh, I'll be voting yes also. Uh, as Mr. Ross pointed out earlier, it was on our uh, original site plan for smart code uh, on the original plan back in 2007, I believe it was. And so um, it falls within these requirements, so I'm voting yes. Mr. Hernandez. Uh, also voting yes. Um, obviously, the location of the out parcel building um, from the rear property line um, uh, lends itself well to uh, this warrant. Alderman Owens. For the reasons stated previously, I vote yes. Mr. Saunders? I'm voting yes to the fact that this is a redevelopment of existing property and the warrant is justified due to the fact that the uh, rear setback would not be obtained by this redevelopment. Chairman Harless. I also vote yes due to the uniqueness of the shape of the property and the fact that it is being recommissioned. With that, uh, we have a unanimous approval on the warrants and the motion and the warrant is approved. Mr. Parker, you and your team are to be congratulated. We look forward to the new building coming in. Uh, we're all excited with the smart growth concept. Uh, we appreciate you working with staff as well as you and your team have, and we're excited to have you in Germantown. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ross, are we ready for project number two? 
Thank you, Chairman Harless. Item 5B on tonight's agenda is the Forest Hill Heights amended plan development. Uh, the request in front of you is outline plan amendment and preliminary and final site plan approval for a 310 unit multifamily residential development that uh, will be called phase 19 of the Forest Hill Heights plan development pending approval. Uh, to give everybody their bearings, uh, this area is south of Winchester, north of Crestwin Hills. Uh, the area is currently zoned T5. It is part of the larger Forest Hill Heights small area plan effort. The proposed development is in this area that was designed uh, as part of the larger Forest Hill Heights small area plan to be the residential quarter and the center of mass for the plan to uh, answer that age old question of chicken and egg. Do you bring rooftops before you bring retail? And the effort was to establish a, uh, a number of rooftops in order to encourage more of the mixed use development uh, was the recommendation coming out of the small area plan. This is the full build out concept of master plan. As you can see within the uh, uh, Looney Ricks KISS designed and Planning Commission and Board of Mayor and Alderman approved plan. There are buildings that are lining the street both on this center drive as well as along Crestwin and internally with uh, parking behind the buildings. The revised final site plan that's in front of you after a few trips to the uh, Smart Code Review Commission uh, committee meeting includes a clubhouse that uh, helps to work the transition into the more mixed use development area of the Forest Hill Heights plan as you move north towards Winchester with the large, uh, what the applicant calls bone buildings along uh, the center drive that creates a streetscape with the movement, uh, the push-pull design of the buildings and these small pocket parks in between the buildings to uh, create gathering places along the streetscape. And then they kept the buildings going along Crestwind Drive at the recommendation of the Smart Code Review Committee, again, to work with the land in that area to reduce the need for a retaining wall and to strengthen the relationship of the streetscape and the buildings towards the street with on-street parking in a parallel format along the center drive and in a angled parking format along Crestwind. Again, going back to the plan, you can see how the layout conforms with the design intent of the plan. And as we move into the architecture recommendations that the applicant spent a significant time uh, putting together and working with staff on the design guidelines, uh, I wanted to show a couple of the images from the Forest Hill Heights small area plan so that you can see how they picked up on some of these elements as they started to design their buildings. You can see in the different building types that they added materials so that there's a strong base with materials that we like to see here in Germantown, including these brick and masonry elements, added details along the corners and created uh, the basic lines dividing these up. These are different uh, material types and different uh, portions of the building, that push-pull of architecture that you like to see when you're trying to create an engaging street frontage. It allows for the buildings to change as someone is walking along this center drive, going in and out of the buildings, walking up towards uh, what we hope is a redeveloped Winchester frontage. This particular building type, they responded to, the applicant responded to recommendations from the Smart Code Review Committee to add brick elements instead of uh, EFIS stucco elements to the base and added some detail into the center of the uh, outside of the building. These are the big house buildings that were modified to, again, use more of the brick and stone elements that the 
materials that are called for within the small area plan and within our design guidelines for the city of Germantown in general ask for. Uh, these buildings will all be in the center of the plan behind the e-urban buildings. These are called big house buildings. Uh, this is more of a townhouse structure where the other are more of stack flats with uh, street level entry. And then finally, this is the clubhouse building that helps to mark the transition from the residential quarter of the Forest Hill Heights small area plan into the mixed use uh, entertainment quarter of the center of the plan. You can see that they picked up on the gallery uh, colonnade elements that you saw in those example images from the small area plan. Uh, there will be units above the base of the building. This will be the office, leasing office for the development, along with their uh, party room, their gym, and other areas that will activate the ground floor of this, but they are requiring a few warrants associated with these different elements that you see through these building types. There's a total of seven warrants. Uh, I, I want to quickly walk through those. Uh, warrant number one uh, gets more towards the civic space. If you'll uh, let me get back. This is the civic space associated with it. This is a dog park gathering uh, larger parklet area within the development, but they've also got these smaller parks along the frontage uh, that they're asking for as part of the civic space warrant requirement. This is a warrant that is required by the code under section 23758 that civic space does have to be approved by warrant in any smart code district. Warrant number two is for section 23774A. It relates to the building siding and the front setback. Buildings needing to be a minimum of zero to 12 feet from the frontage front property line. This is to uh, allow for the buildings to be further back uh, in this particular area. This will be a, uh, a, an open street. There are no gates associated with this development. So this is, while it's a private street, it's still an open street. And so this space right here does require a warrant because this building is set back 68 feet uh, from the back of curb. Warrant number three relates to the uh, street screen line. 70% uh, is the minimum, uh, but I talked about the push-pull of the buildings to create these little gathering spaces in between the buildings. and. Uh, while they started with uh, lots of articulation in the building, they did lower that down to five movements within the building, and then these gathering spaces that uh, facilitate pedestrian movement in and out into future development within Forest Hill Heights. But that doesn't allow for a straight frontage line along this building area, so that requires a warrant because the street screen moves back and forth. Uh, warrant number four is facade treatment along the building walls being uh, composed of transparent windows or doorways. This is section 23786D2. Uh, the use of reflected highly tenant glass uh, is prohibited to meet this requirement. This is uh, a warrant to allow the requirement to apply only to the mixed-use clubhouse building, they will meet the requirement for the code uh, on the mixed-use clubhouse building, but these other buildings uh, moving south along this drive and along Crestwind uh, are exclusively residential buildings, so the applicant is asking for the uh, warrant to be applied to those uh, in this case so that um, you know, they are meeting the development requirements for it here, but these being exclusively residential, it creates a challenge for that warrant to be met. Uh, building materials is warrant number five, 786D3. Uh, materials uh, requested that we look for brick, stone, or other uh, hard coat materials. Other materials are permitted by warrant. 
This is uh, for the use of cement fiberboard lap siding and EFIS along some of these buildings. They have brought the buildings up to only 27% use of EFIS. We look for no more than 30% uh, uh, EFIS. So we want to uh, commend them on bringing it up, but still uh, trying to make sure that they, uh, uh, as the design has changed on the buildings, they, they've gotten it about as uh, good as they can get it without making them all brick buildings. Uh, warrant number six is on the driveway parking standards. This is for the width of driveways that are in between these big houses. These are a little bit uh, over 37 feet wide uh, in between, and that's really to facilitate parking movements and cars moving in and out of the garages that are underneath these big house buildings. The code requires the driveway widths to only be 24 feet. And then finally, warrant number seven is for surface parking spaces. As a total on their 17.7 acre development with the 310 apartments, uh, the code requires one space per one unit. They are uh, bringing in 546 spaces that are distributed, uh, 140 within the garage, so they don't count. Uh, 326 that are on site surface and then 80 that are on street parking. So these parallel on this road, uh, center road, and then the perpendicular along Crestwind. So that brings them to a total of approximately 34 parking spaces of the required number of surface parking spaces for the smart code development. Uh, with that, uh, that does close out the warrants that they're asking for. Uh, I do want to go back and touch on the amendment to the outline plan. The original Forest Hill Heights plan development was recorded by Memphis and Shelby County in 1996. This area was annexed into the city in 2000, and so it brought that plan development in with the annexation. The outline plan was amended that same year in 2000, uh, and so with the addition of the T5 overlay in 2016, the request for the amendment to the outline plan is to allow the uses associated with the T5 zoning district to be allowed within the amendment to the outline plan. So this is a two-fold request in front of you tonight that includes the uh, amendment to the outline plan and then the preliminary and final site plan that has the seven warrants associated with it. Uh, finally, uh, we are looking at a total of 17 and a half dwelling units to the acre. Uh, the plan calls for in this area uh, eight or more dwelling units to the acre. Uh, the concept plan laid out approximately 225 units in this area. They have added uh, more units due to the recommendations by the Planning Commission to uh, address the street in a better way, fix their retaining wall situation due to the lay of the land, and also to uh, make the numbers work on the uh, land economics of this. Uh, staff is open to any questions. The applicant and their team is here, and they do have a short presentation uh, if the commission is open to that. Mr. Ross, thank you. Commissioners, questions of staff? If none, uh, I would ask the applicant if he, would like to, he or she would like to make a presentation. Please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, I'm Jessica Tuttle. I'm with Watermark Residential, uh, 111 Monument Circle, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46204. So, oh, thank you so much. I uh, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, and thank you, Cameron, for your presentation on our project. I think Cameron hit on most of the information. I'd like to go through maybe the first five or so slides, uh, just for anyone that's new, and then pan to how we address the comment about the pond amenity space. Um, based on last month's meeting. 
So to start, uh, Watermark is out of Indianapolis. This will be our 33rd project when we go into construction next summer. I wanted to show, uh, well, I think this kind of gets us there. There we go. Um, I wanted to show the need tonight. And um, I had the slide on top shows our site location. Sure, thank you, Cameron. That's great, thank you. Okay, so uh, back to the need and the story of why we're here. Um, we've actually been looking in Germantown for over three years. Um, when the small area plan was approved in 2016, uh, we jumped at the site. But the story here is really that Watermark looks for markets that have major employers, major new retail growth, close to major thoroughfares, um, and then affluent communities such as Germantown. So the major employers is just one part of that that I wanted to show. The MSA as a whole has had 1.5% job growth within the last well, since 2011, and that's per year. So the industry standard is uh, for every five jobs that's created, a multifamily unit is needed uh, to, to support that growth. Um, so based on what the MSA has delivered to the market, which is only 4,000 units, you need 10,000 units to support that growth. So there's a shortage of 6,500 units. And more specifically within Germantown's submarket, the last project was uh, built in 1997, and then there's only one other project under construction. So there's a lot of pent-up demand, uh, and that's really why Watermark is here tonight. This is a view of the small area plan, uh, just to show that Watermark will be building along the west side of the Central Spine Road, and we're matching what was approved by the city when they went through the framework to create the small area plan for Forest Hill Heights. This is that master plan. It's the mix of high and low residential, mix of office and retail. So it really drew us to the site because we think our, our tenant and our residents here are going to want to work, live, and play. And we love that this master plan creates that space for them to do so. Uh, also, this market specifically has the resident that we're looking for. We're looking for a professional that may not want the maintenance of a house. Uh, for our rents uh, and what we're proposing, in order to afford a one-bedroom <coughs> unit, you would have to make a salary of $70,000 per year. A two-bedroom or a three-bedroom would be over a six-figure salary. So we really love Germantown, and we're really excited to be here. Uh, this is our site plan just overlaid on that master plan to show how we've matched um, the roadways. And then, again, multifamily is going where multifamily was proposed. This is our public improvements. I uh, just wanted to show that when we get on site next summer, we will be building the entire Central Spine Road from, Crest, from Winchester down to Crestwind Hills Drive. And then we'll be building a six acre regional detention pond for this master plan, as well as making payments for the traffic signals that are needed in the fully built out condition based on our traffic report, and then paying for one mile sewer upgrade um, from an 8-inch to a 12-inch. So in total, over $2 million worth of public improvements when we start constructing this next summer. Here's the overall site plan. Uh, this is similar to what Cameron had shown. Uh, so really, I think a lot of this you have all seen, our streetscape, our buildings, and the level of detail we've added to our buildings. I do want to show this is the new Variation 3. We did do painted brick. Uh, instead of EFIS. We looked for a light colored brick. We couldn't find one we liked, so we think the painted brick will really clean it up and look nice. And then lastly, I want to pan to the pond. There was a comment from Super Committee about uh, making the pond aesthetically pleasing and more of a um, amenity to the master plan. And so Henry Miner, our landscape architect, uh, Henry, you might be best at speaking to the Proposed changes. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Henry Miner, Dahlhoff Thomas Design, uh, 6465 North Quail Hollow Road, Suite 401, Memphis, Tennessee, 38120. Uh, so 
we heard the comments loud and clear uh, at the subcommittee meeting and what we wanted to do was prepare a series of graphics to kind of um, highlight you know where the pond was going to be located and then what um, we felt like some improvements could be done to, to make it more uh, aesthetically pleasing so um, as you see here uh, Crestwind Hills Drive uh, is here on the we've got the drawing rotated to where north is to your left um, with the ThyssenKrupp headquarters here and here's the corner of the uh, of the site for watermark and so this existing uh, drainage ditch that runs through here, it's about 500, a little over 500 feet from uh, Crestwind Hills Drive down to here. That'll stay uh, undisturbed and keep that wooded, um, wooded condition uh, after the pond's built. And once it enters into about this point, um, that swale is going to have to be redesigned to allow for the water to come into uh, this regional detention facility. And so kind of the, the major um, issue that we discussed um, at the subcommittee meeting was this, uh, where the blue line is, what that's representing is a, a concrete, small concrete swale um, that's only about six to, to eight feet wide um, that will allow for the water to, to be easily um, conveyed through the uh, detention pond down to the exit point here. And so what we were trying to do was soften that to where this wouldn't look like so much of a, you know, as much as it needs to be engineered from a functionality standpoint, you know, how can we add some form to that function? And so what you see here um, is, I'll do an enlargement, is right along the uh, sides of the concrete swell, you see this kind of meandering line here, and then in the internal part, it's kind of highlighted a little bit yellow. What we're proposing there is, is that that would actually be a meandering edge of what we call a wet basin seed mix. That's uh, native grasses, wildflowers, plants that are aesthetically pleasing. They provide wildlife benefits, and at the same time, they would help really hide and soften the fact that there's a concrete swale in there. Um, and then on the these outer areas, uh, we would come in and plant some supplemental uh, trees that are you know, used to having periods of inundation, you can take the, the wet feet is kind of what we call it. Um, this is a section uh, showing the, again, the small concrete swale that would go through uh, the, the detention pond and then the, uh, these wet basin seed mix plants, the grasses and, and wildflowers would get up around two to four feet tall. And just to go back to this, the, the width that we're proposing is, is 30 feet about 30 feet on each side minimum, so it would be a total of 60 feet with the uh, concrete swale going through the middle of it. And so the way this would work from a maintenance standpoint is obviously everybody involved in this development would, would you know, be you know, part of that um, property, uh, property owners association that would agree to maintain this. These areas where the trees are, that's kind of this lighter green, would be regularly maintained, um, just like any lawn, any mowed area of a detention pond. Um, these areas would be allowed to kind of grow up and then once a year they would be cut down to keep any trees, woody species, any kind of volunteers from growing and, and keep it, you know, in check each year and keep a, a manicured, you know, look but still something that looks more natural um, and using natural native plants. Um, we feel like the, the detention facility could become more of a, more of a natural looking amenity than, than so much of an engineered pond. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, questions? I assume you've reached agreement with the owner of the property on this wetlands retention area? <laughs> we have, yes. Charles Wurzberger, our seller, has uh, signed a cost sharing agreement. So we are ready to basically get on site after this and get going. Good. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this project? Please come forward. Do we have anyone in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Please come forward. <coughs> Do 
Good evening. My name is Edgar Babian. I live at 3580 Crestwind Drive. Uh, first off, uh, the drawing you had up there of parking spaces. Uh, first time it's been brought up that I've seen. Uh, but the parking spaces along Crestwind Hills, it looks like y'all are taking half of Crestwind Hills for parking for development that is a private development. Have they paid the city for parking to use those spaces or are those paces counted as part of the development? Now, that's the first time I've seen it on a drawing, but I haven't been to all the meetings. But it, it looks like uh, that if you look on the south side, that's uh, Crestman Hills now goes from the, the width it is now uh, to roughly half of what the width was before. The reason I bring that up, back in 1996 when we started this development with the discussions with Mr. Wurzberger and his group, I'm the president of the Winchester Forest Hill Estates Homeowner Association, by the way, uh, the agreement was that all roads in this development would come off of Crestwind Hills and nothing would go to Winchester but Crestwind Hills. Now since then, Tyndall was cut through on a weekend, it used to be a cove, and then they cut it into Winchester. We got Business Park Drive that's been cut in there also. Uh, Crestwind Hills was supposed to be the thoroughfare through the development, and that was put in the covenants of the subdivision and, and all that. But I don't know if y'all are aware of that, but if you look there, we've, we've lost part of the road. Uh, and the developer just said that they were gonna connect into Winchester. Well, the connection into Winchester, you're only allowed so many curb cuts. That was part of the agreement in 1996 also. Uh, we have exceeded, or we have come to the number of curve cuts in the development. Uh, if you wanna close one of them, but the agreement was no roads, okay? No roads go out on Winchester, we wanna keep Winchester a thoroughfare. And the reason is, is because the subdivision, not our subdivision, but the new subdivision up there that's behind the gate, they're gonna have cars coming in there, they're gonna have lights going in their backyard and all that. The reason was to keep it a thoroughfare so we don't have noise in our subdivision. So if you would look at that, but if you would turn this down until you figure out what they're doing with the parking over there and how they're going to address or if they're going to be allowed to come off of Winchester. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babian. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Hi, my name is Lena Dwyke, and I'm a resident of the Vinings, and we're the um, uh, houses across the street from this, um, from this apartment plan. And our main concern is of the traffic. You know, they really need to keep that under, you know, they need to, need to think about that because it's gonna really affect us. We have already, um, we've lived there for about a year now, we've already had a break-in into our gates. It's a gated community, and we've already had a break-in. We've had someone completely ram their car into our gates, and right now it's still open, and um, our insurance is still trying to fix it. So um, I can only imagine how much trouble we're going to have and how many crimes we're going to have with 310 units. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's a great plan for them, but uh, you have to consider people that um, have bought houses here, have invested a lot of money in these houses. They're prestigious, high-end houses. And um, we were not under the impression, I mean, we were under the impression that these, that that land was going to be for, um, for offices. And we are open to the idea of having high-end houses, you know, single, single uh, unit homes um, that match the houses that we live in. Because I believe that Germantown and that area especially um, has a certain level of, of prestige that we should keep up. Um, and so we are very concerned about the crime rate that's going to happen. It's going to go up. With 310 units, you're going to have people wanting to break in our gates again. We're, you're going to have a lot of people just hanging out at night there wanting to cause trouble. Um, so that is a big issue for us. Um, also traffic. Um, you know, you're going to have more, like I saw the stoplights that they were thinking about having. That's going to cause a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic for us. And that's something to keep in mind. Um, also, there, apparently there's going to be, um, I believe it's the park complex that's also under, um, under plans, and it's going to be across, like near, it's also across the street from us, it's near this um, complex as well, and that's going to be, so, so if this passes and the other 
uh, complex passes, we're going to have about 1,000 units across the street from us. And that's a big concern um, because we're not living in apartments. We're living in nice houses. We uh, pay for our gates. And to have apartment plans such as this, it's not just apartment plans. It's also um, a green, I mean, uh, what should I call it? A park. And um, so 30, it's going to be a lot of. 30 seconds. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. And so um, we really want uh, you guys to keep in consideration that it's, it's not a good idea for us. It's going to make the traffic go up and um, the crime rates go up. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comments. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak in, against this project? Please come forward. Arafat Milham, uh, 9342 Cielo is the finding also. I want just to bring to attention, this is, will be almost, I think, the third or the fourth apartment in our area. And we feel that our area is being targeted because maybe it's the only air left in Germantown, and you guys are proving left and right apartments. Now there's one apartment there. There's, I think, I be, we've been told by our association that there are already two already approved, and this will be the third one. And there's also on the other, on the Colorville, I, we've been told also that I think there's in the process of also approving also apartments. So you guys over, over, overwhelming, overwhelming us with all the directions, all apartments. We are in gated community. We are in Germantown. We are part of Germantown. And we picked Germantown because it's safe, assuming it's safe. Unfortunately, just two weeks ago, we had someone, with, we are gated community. Someone take his car at around 1.30, break in, and get in, into our community. Now we are not gated community anymore because it's, it's already break in. I mean, this is, this is something, the safety issue is very concerned for us. And the biggest investment for anybody in, in the United States is their houses. And we, we hate to see our houses, like the value drops or we see more crimes. We love our, our neighbor, we enjoy the neighbor, everything in the neighbor, but this is not what we, we expecting. Now in this year, I think if I'm not mistaken, this will be the third project of apartment in our area. And this is gonna be, if this is approved, I think this is gonna be close to a thousand unit being added to our area, in top of what you guys have already. So it sounds that, it sounds, the, vi the vision for this area is just to be just apartments. If this is the case, I think we should be informed before we, we buy our houses or something. Let me, I don't know, but this is something is, we didn't expect that it's gonna be overwhelmed in all this area is just apartments on Germantown. And we heard recently that also in that Carverville part is gonna be just apartments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Yes, sir, please come forward. Steve Atkins, uh, 3638 Romano Way East, in the Vinings. And uh, more than anything, I'm just here to reiterate uh, what my neighbors have said. Uh, there is a concern about the traffic, the amount of traffic that's going to be dumped onto Winchester. Uh, Winchester is already a very busy road. Uh, in addition to that, we're concerned about property values going down because of multi-housing, multi-dwelling housing. Multi -dwelling housing being developed around us. Uh, and in addition to that, we are concerned about uh, the crime rate, the potential crime rate going up in and around our area because, again, of uh, multi-dwelling housing. That just is a tendency to go hand in hand with uh, apartments. And so I'm just here to reiterate what my neighbors have said and to show that uh, there is a, a valid concern from uh, the residents in the Vinings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Please come forward. Yes, ma'am. Let me catch her first, please, sir, and then you. <laughs> My name is Jamie Pakunko. I'm also at the Vinings, but I'm also speaking on behalf of some people at Forest Hill Downs. Could we have your address? 9318 South Romano. Thank you. A um, couple of things that I want to address here. Originally, when we were quoted this plan, um, let's go back to, we were told 225 units. Now, the 225 units was before y'all 
already approved the Goodwin Farms, which is a small housing unit, which was done last month. Um, it was before y'all approved the Viridian, which is 380 units. And now y'all are wanting to increase this another 30% bigger than what we were promised last year. And you know, we kind of worked back and forth. People from our neighborhood came to a lot of these meetings to try to work together with you guys. And we were not excited about it in the beginning. Um, and I feel like that we have you know, worked together and come together on something that we would be a little more amiable to, but this was all before all these other units were approved. Um, so now you want 30% bigger. 30% um, bigger, have we talked about what that's going to do to our services? Are y'all increasing police? Are y'all increasing, I mean, what are we gonna do about the schools? Because right now, the statistics on the schools, it's only gonna be K through five, and that's gonna be around the corner. If we take an, all of the overages on the schools, on the school enrollment, if we put them all down to ideal level, and put all of those people that were over, that basically fills up our new school. So now you wanna add another thousand units between everything that's already approved. And that's before next Tuesday's meeting when we're gonna be talking about the park, which I imagine most of my homeowners in the area will be here again. I don't know how many units that's gonna be. So we're talking about a thousand new units. Have we considered what those services are gonna cost the city? I just don't understand the need to so densely populate something. And then for a lot of my people that are here that don't know, they're not, I mean, we just, we live our lives. We go to work every day. We aren't familiar with all the term, terminology, and a lot of my homeowners came here to talk about this. What is T, um, the T5 zoning? Can you explain to them, can somebody here with a little bit of history that can explain it better than I can, um, talk about what was changed? Because this is a lot different than what we were posed. What we were posed last year about Forest Hill Heights was gonna be a lot more condo units. It was gonna be a lot less of apartments. And I don't see the condos anywhere. I haven't heard anybody talk about them. And it looks like a lot of the land and the space that y'all are using or that you're proposing on this map right here, unless it's not to scale, I don't see any room for those condos and the retail. Thank you, ma'am. Do you want me to stay up here while he answers? <laughs> We're going to let the other people in the audience speak. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Todd Suddeth, and I also live in the Vinings at 3645 Reminder Way West. Of course, I live across the street, and we talk about, as I understand, the smart planning community, right? Of course, looking out my window across the street, a thousand units in that area is not a smart plan. Uh, so my suggestion to you guys to propose is what other option would we have? The development that we just talked about looks very nice, looks all great, great presentation. That's what we do in life, right? We present, it looked very good. So what's next? And then what's next? And that's what's next. You know, we look out there 10 years from now, a thousand units or plus, and the whole area is going to be very different than what it is today. So. My um, suggestion would be take a step back and look at the next stages of this whole project. So that's kind of my input. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Carmi Spillers. I'm at 9279 Cielo, the Vinings also. And just want to reiterate, please, Think about what you're doing. This is way too many multifamily homes going in here. And we understand, we love the drawings, we look at everything that you see, and you're talking about, okay, what you're going to charge for those apartments. It's gonna require $70,000 or it's gonna be a six figure uh, income. That's great if you can find those people to fill those apartments. If not, we're looking at a lot of empty items there. And that's not helping us at all. So we just want you to think about it, work for us. That's what we're here for. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Mariah Saleem. I actually live at 1851 River Valley Drive, which is 
next door. Um, but I'm a nurse, and as a healthcare provider, I want to follow what she stated about services. And I just would like to know what plans are in place as far as police department, fire department, emergency services such as ambulances, and um, access to health care in the area. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Phil Connor, I live at 3664 Crestwind. Mr. Chairman, in a meeting that I attended recently, you said, and I quote, we're all residents and citizens of Germantown and we take that very seriously. And tonight, I want to remind you of that and ask you to take this very seriously. As everyone else has previously stated, this is just overloading our area. There are other proposals that are, that are out there for more apartments and more apartments and more apartments. And it seems like that every time the city approves something, then a developer comes along and wants to increase the concentration. Uh, we have uh, approval for apartments. And the next thing, what we had, and Mr. Ross, please tell me if I'm correct. We had an approval in a small area plan for 225 units. I believe that's correct. Now we're up to 310. And we have another development that's going to be proposed or is proposed on the north side of Winchester, down close to the power lines. Uh, they haven't really been specific about how many they want to put there, but it's obvious they want to put as many in there as they can squeeze in there. So yes, we're all concerned about the traffic and apartments on top of apartments and on top of apartments. Is this what you want for Germantown? Uh, I have to believe it's not. Uh, and like the gentleman before, take a step back. Please don't, don't go forward to this right now. Take a step back and look. Is this the face? Is this what you want? for Germantown in this area. You know, you can vote tonight, and one of these days you will be gone. But what you vote tonight, we're stuck with, period. So step back, analyze this some more, reduce the concentration, get back to looking at the 225 units instead of 310, and see what can be made to work there. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this project? Seeing none, hearing none, I want to thank the citizens for your comments, okay? Uh, and we all are citizens of Germantown. Mr. Ross, any comments? Let me start by stepping back to 2015 in 2015, the city worked with Looney Ricks Kiss in partnership with the community on developing the small area plan. Uh, as those planning efforts go, it's a community-driven process where the community is uh, invited to be a part of it, to, to come to evening reviews over a five-day design workshop. Through that effort, uh, this concept plan was created. And uh, while this shows the full build-out potential of the area, it does leave in the existing areas down there, considers a variety of uses. Uh, one of the uh, recommendations that came out of that was the application of the T5 zoning district to this area south of Winchester. The T5 zoning district is not the most intensive uh, zoning district that is within the smart code area. It's called the urban center zone, and it allows for a variety of uses that uh, run the spectrum of um, uh, apartment buildings, row houses, duplexes, uh, to live work units, accessory dwelling units, uh, houses uh, are not included in this, nor are cottages. But you can also get uh, hotels, inns, office buildings, open market buildings, retail buildings, restaurants, uh, civic uses, parks, 
uh, other areas such as police and fire stations as the area starts to develop. And all these uses are considered as part of this concept plan. What that plan also concluded through actually working in the area, taking measurements, you know, practically living in the area for uh, 20 hours a day, uh, working down there through this design workshop, was that Crestwin Hills as a road is rather wide. It's rather underutilized by traffic at this point. Uh, it was used by pedestrians that were forced into the street to walk along the street because there is limited pedestrian facilities within this area, be it uh, 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 multimodal, so uh, bicycling facilities as well as sidewalks. So one of the plan's uh, recommendations, the small area plan, was to apply streetscape standards, slim down the cross section of Crestwin Hills so that we could add in on-street parking uh, as well as larger sidewalks along Crestwin to facilitate movement from these existing offices as well as future multifamily development, multifamily, uh, getting back to one of the other comments tonight, doesn't always have to be a for rent product. It can be a for sale product. But in this case, the market uh, is responding to a for rent product. The other portion of the plan looked at the absorption opportunity within our submarket. Uh, we had a economic impact consultant, RCL Co., Robert Charles Lesser Company, looked at uh, a snapshot at that period in 2015 and tried to use uh, what a, a amounts to a crystal ball in modeling out future absorption. Uh, Ms. Tuttle touched on the market capacity and identifying the job growth within the Memphis MSA and need for a variety of housing types of which a rental housing type is part of that. They identified through a variety of different housing types the addition of 500 uh, to 600 units being applied over the first five years and then a full build out with a mix of single family, high density, multifamily, of 1,500 to 2,000 units being applied in this area. I'd also like to clarify that the Planning Commission has not approved final site plan for any multifamily development or any single family development. You approved an outline plan for 12 units to the acre or 300 units over 25 acres for the Viridian development and you approved an outline plan for 230 lots over a 10 phase development uh, on the Goodwin Farms property which is zoned for single family residential and they did bring a single family plan unit development project to you. We've talked about that in earnest over the last several meetings and at the board meeting but those are only in the outline plan phases. What's in front of you tonight is a preliminary and final site plan. So this would be the first multifamily unit approved by this body. And with the warrants associated with it, they would have to go to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for approval for the warrant. So it still has multiple steps to take. While there are other projects that are uh, in discussion in both concept, sketch, inside our boundaries, outside of our boundaries, those projects have not come before you for any preliminary or final plan approval. So we are aware of the infrastructure needs and the physical impacts that are associated with this. Currently today, uh, I, I will exclude the recent gate crashing at the Vinings as an unfortunate event, but this area of the city, this police district, is the safest police district in Germantown. We see a low amount of crime. It is well serviced uh, and meets our ISO standard rating of one, which the city recently received, uh, to uh, service from Fire Station 4. 
Uh, if there are major uh, issues, we do have reciprocity with both Shelby County that has a fire station south on Forest Hill Irene, south of 385, and also reciprocity for Collierville, which has a fire station at the corner of Shea Road and Houston Levee. So we are well serviced for these needs. Part of our capital uh, views of our budgets as we look at this every year and departmental budgets is what do we need to better service our city. So the fire department, the police department, and even my own development department will be looking at positions needed to best service the city, to best review plans. Public Works looks at the infrastructure that's needed to service these areas. Also as part of the small area plan, a comprehensive infrastructure study was done. It showed the need for traffic signals as this area develops at the intersection of Crestwin and Forest Hill Irene and Crestwin and Winchester. Uh, if you're looking at today's traffic count numbers, we could really put up a traffic signal here with warrants uh, as soon as Watermark goes into development and that the signal to be placed at Winchester and Crestwin could follow as other developments come along. But the priority is to make sure that traffic is handled efficiently and safely in this area. There, are, uh, there is a significant um, distance here that allows for speeding to occur trying to add in signals, trying to add in what I call positive friction through good design, uh, gives people a reason to slow down, to uh, take in their surroundings. So adding the on-street parking, adding in the streetscape elements, adding the sidewalks to Crestwin uh, so that people can actually participate in the area rather than just dodge cars is something that we identified and those improvements would be paid for as part of the development of Crestwind. They are paying for the extension of the road from Crestwind through to Winchester. That is a road. Curb cuts, as we look at curb cuts, are considered drives into individual parking lots. Roads are not classified as curb cuts uh, the way that we look at those. Streets are different than driveways into parking lots. So we're trying to limit curb cuts into parking lots by creating uh, Tyndale in the past, this new central spine road that allows for access off of those larger roads to service these developments. These developments have to come in in a way that provides for future development to give us the retail, to give us the shopping, to give us the restaurants that this area looks for. Some of the rever re residents referenced the previous and underlying zoning of office complex. The market, both nationally and locally, has moved past office parks. Markets uh, are looking for areas where you can have amenities that are built in and not built onto your campuses so that you integrate with a community instead of isolate yourself from a community. And we see this as a way to embrace a community. One uh, good example is uh, that of Amazon that is looking for a headquarters somewhere in America. And their current headquarters uh, portion of it in Seattle, in South Lake Union, is integrated into a community. They've, their front doors open to the community. They don't have a cafeteria in their headquarters because they have restaurants out the front door. They don't have a gym because they have sidewalks for their employees to go jog on or to ride their bike to and from work. You know, these are the things that companies are looking for. This plan is part of our recruitment tool from economic development as well as residential recruitment to provide for a variety of generational housing choices so that our residents can stay in our community. If you reference the uh, household incomes that Ms. Tuttle talked about of 75,000 or more for a one bedroom or over six figures for a two or three bedroom, our average household income in Germantown is around $110,000 for our three, four, five bedroom houses. So this isn't uh, you know, bringing in crime to our community. This is giving a, another housing choice and a housing type. 
and a place. You know, if I'm to sum up everything that I, I've said here uh, as it relates to our overall effort, not specifically this development, but the city's overall effort, it's a simple sentence, and it's economy shaping through placemaking. We as a city are looking to create a place for developments to occur, for residents to participate in our city and not to feel isolated in their homes, but to engage in that place, to get out onto the sidewalks, to feel comfortable, to feel safe. And part of that is creating a community, not just an isolated <coughs> apartment complex. So this is just the first development in this area. It's not the last, it's the first. It's not the third, it's the first. We want to make sure though that we do this right. And I think that uh, Watermark and their development team would agree that uh, they have spent a significant time with staff and a significant time with the Smart Code Review Committee to get this right because we all understand that with being the first, we want to make sure that this is done correctly so that we make this a place that people want to participate in and to eventually, as it develops out, live, work, and play in. Mr. Ross, thank you. Very comprehensive. Um, I think Mr. Ross answered most of the questions that have come up. Uh, and with that said, we're gonna move along. Commissioners, do you have any other questions, either of staff or the applicant? I got one question. Somebody brought up, uh, that I think you touched on a little bit, that this was supposed to be offices only. And at one point, was it, it's zoned for that and, and not now, or where am I missing that out on there? Where, where would they get that information or where would they be, think that that was the case? So the underlying zoning is 051. This is a, excuse me, this is an overlay. Uh, so the, the underlying zoning still applies. So if uh, a large office user were to come in and want to take advantage of the office district with a 51 foot height uh, option to it, they could come in. But that's the underlying zoning. But when we applied the smart code overlay in uh, 2016, uh, that became the underlying zoning with the T5 option above it. So you've got the T5 mix of uses or an office campus use, office complex. Right. Other questions? If not, Mr. Bacon, do you? Certainly. Just a couple of questions. Can you, um, you talked to us about this, I think, in executive session and the breakdown of one bedroom versus two bedroom versus three bedroom here? Uh, Ms. Tuttle can nod her head, but uh, I believe at Smart Code Review Committee, she indicated that 40% would be one bedroom, 40% two bedroom, and 20% three bedroom out of the 310 units. Okay. Um, then just a question, more detailed question really about the detention basin and that, um, that concrete swale is, uh, maybe this is a question, uh, it, it, can you talk, is there any um, alternative, and I know Cameron and I, we've talked about, a, uh, maybe it was Tim and I, about um, a material called Fleximat. Is it necessary to use that uh, concrete or is there something we can switch that might produce um, uh, a greener? Sure, I'm Ryan McMaster with Kimley Horn, 214 Oceanside Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, the purpose of the concrete swell is to get water from the north or the left side of the sheet here to the right, which is the outlet location. That concrete swell is at a half a percent, so it's a very flat swell. There's about 300 feet from north to south through this pond, which at a half percent is a foot and a half in elevation difference. So in an effort to provide a grass swell, we would need to go at least 2% roughly to get that water to convey through the, uh, the pond. And in that case, that would be an elevation difference of six feet from one end to the other. Right. So at this point right now, we have a, a six acre regional pond in valuable yes. real estate. So that it, it was meant to maximize 
the impact we were proposing. Thank you. Certainly. Because this, I think, speaks to the crime perception and on whether Mr. Robinson is total who would be best to answer, but so 60% of the units, 40% 40, 40 are two-bedroom, 20% are three-bedroom. Would you please repeat the financial demographics that are contemplated for those residents? I think I heard for the one bedrooms, it's contemplated to be a 70,000 per year income? Correct, tenant. correct. So uh, a two bedroom, so 60% of the units is plus or minus, what kind of financial demographic? Uh, so you'd have to have a six figure salary to afford a two bedroom. And that's the average two bedroom rent. So that's substantial. <laughs> it is, I think. Uh, and that's the two bedroom, that's not the three bedroom. Right, and they're very similar um, in rents, but our acquisitions team would be the best to answer this question. Watermark as a whole is a very conservative company, so if we didn't feel like the rents could be met here, we wouldn't be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, maybe along the same lines, and, and perhaps um, my assumption um, of who, who are, I guess, more inclined to be criminals or commit crimes than others, but under the assumption, uh, be it right or wrong, that single individuals might be more likely to uh, commit crimes than um, families. And so of, of the 300 some odd units, 60% are gonna be two and three bedroom units. Presumably at your other properties, a, a significant portion of those are family tenants as opposed to single tenants is that do you know what that statistic is and, and is that assumption I don't know who can answer that uh, even a valid assumption yeah it it really varies with each market that we go into mm -hmm. but the 40 40 20 mix is pretty standard mm -hmm. um, I can tell you our average age for a renter is 37 so even if it's a one bedroom it's usually a tenant that travels a lot for their job doesn't want the maintenance of a house mm -hmm. uh, but once you know, all of the amenities, the resort style pool, the clubhouse with the accordion doors and the bar top. So it's, it's, a, it's a higher age range than you would think. It's not the younger party town yeah. with, you know, college kids or anyone that might start getting into the community more. <laughs> mm. You had a graphic that showed you've built 30 of these communities or 35, however many it was. Do you typically maintain, is this, do you maintain a portfolio? Do you maintain ownership of these properties as a rule or? It's definitely a mix. Um, with Germantown, we are going to hold with Germantown. Um, you know, markets like Co Colorado that we've built in a lot, there are a lot of investors that want to have investments in Colorado. Germantown is the community that we see as a long-term hold. So we just had investment committee actually two weeks ago and I sat through that and I was happy to hear that it is a hold. That's so. encouraging. Thank you. Mr. Ross, there was a question uh, regarding infrastructure down in the south part of, of this area. You might want to address uh, water sewer. I'm going to do the best of my ability and look at the city engineer as I do this, but the capacity in this area based on the analysis that was done as part of the small area plan in 2015 and a model was created so we're able to put these developments into that model that from a sewer capacity served by an eight inch line that runs through this area this development uh, does not exceed the capacity from sewer but it does move it to a level where we do not feel comfortable adding any more to this area. It gives us, uh, a, an, again, an area where the city feels comfortable with it, but we'll need to start looking at the capital improvements plan to consider sewer upgrades uh, before we start to add 
any more multifamily projects to this area that are served off of this eight inch line. The water capacity south of Winchester is served by a system that does have enough capacity to serve these office users as well as this multifamily user. There are concerns for water pressure north of Winchester, but this is on a different system. Uh, just for context, uh, with the Forest Hill Irene road improvement project, a water line upgrade is part of that capital program that will be moving forward at the beginning of our next fiscal year in July. And so that'll help to further uh, up the water capacity and pressure uh, in this area. So we're comfortable with that. Uh, and uh, from road and other uh, traffic light, you know, we talked about that, touched on that, that uh, we can start looking at a signal at Forest Hill Irene and Crestwind in the near term and as other projects come online uh, that uh, signal at Crestwind and Winchester will also be needed. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Other questions, commissioners? I, I just have one question. Somebody brought up the uh, issue of, of overages on the school and the number of people this would bring in, and you seem to have a lot of demographics on ages of people in there uh, that rent these. Do you have a... Uh, a number on families or kids that may be there and, and we we do yeah I should have brought this up earlier but um, another community um, which is a submarket in Denver but suburban it's Parker Colorado so similar possibly to a Germantown asked us to study 40 different apartment communities uh, in that surrounding area that included a few that we had built and then other apartment communities the average um, uh, amount per unit of students that we were adding to the school districts was 0.18 students per unit. So it's actually very low um, and didn't add, I think, I'd have to do the math, but it's usually 20 to 30 students, which is lower than a lot of times a single family development on that same acreage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, interestingly, um, for those that are concerned you're here, I would encourage you um, hanging and waiting for the ne next applicant, which is the school. So there, Mr. Jason Manuel has a lot of interesting data relative to their study about the capacity of the new school. So I think it'll answer a lot of those questions if you're willing to stay with us at this late hour. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Bacon, you have a motion for us. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the Smart Code Review Committee met on October 25th, 2017 and recommended changes to the material mix on two of the proposed e-urban building types and for, that comp and for the comprehensive landscape plan for uh, the regional detention pond to be submitted for review. The applicant's resubmittal materials address both of the Smart Code Review Committee concerns Smart Code Review Committee recommended moving this item to the November 7th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting agenda, subject to the committee's discussion, comments of staff, and revisions presented by the applicant. Letters of recommendation from the DRC and Economic Development Division representatives are included in this report. The main motion tonight, Mr. Chairman, is to approve the outline plan amendment for Forest Hill Heights amended plan development and final site plan for watermark at Forest Hill Heights, phase 19, located at the north side of Crestwind Hill Drive and east of Tyndale Drive for a 310 unit multifamily residential development subject to the commission's discussion, staff comments and conditions as contained in the staff report and documents and plans submitted with the application. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any questions, comments before we call the roll? If not, please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and since we have the plan up on the, on the screen, it's actually good. Um, I'm going to vote to approve the application. Um, I think the small area plan is a good plan, uh, almost to the point of being a great plan. 
Um, I would submit that uh, because I participated in the small area plan process that uh, the city initiated uh, with the planning firm Looney Rex Kiss, there were multiple multiple public meetings. Uh, I know I see a number of people here tonight that attended those meetings. Um, I don't know that what is being proposed tonight is, and, and actually you can see the overlay of the plan on the small area plan is fundamentally different than what was proposed and what was submitted to the public for comment and review back in those days. Um, yes, the density is higher. Uh, we're it's another warrant, but through working with the applicant, uh, what ended up driving the density was the intent of more of an adherence to the original concept of the small area plan by having more building fronts on the street. So it, yes, it drove the density up higher than what, what we had contemplated. Um, you know, I applaud with the applicants, uh, the public infrastructure improvements uh, the amount of roadway uh, infrastructure that uh, they're going to build and turn over to the city uh, with roadway and sewer. Um, I applaud the applicant. It's been a torturous process, frankly, uh, you know, running the rigor of what we as the city's representatives on this commission have tried to do relative to um, creating and, and, and holding the developer accountable to a quality plan and a quality product. Um, I don't mean to take up too much time, but I think it's interesting to think about the demographics and you know the market uh, demographics that the applicant is looking at relative to you know, a level of income that's gonna be necessary to rent one of these units. I would hope that that would allay you know, a lot of fears. I mean, the, you know, the last thing we would want to do is a approve a project in the city that is going to create undue crime levels and things like that. Um, I have to applaud Mr. Ross. Um, that was a very diligent presentation that, or a very diligent answer to a lot of the questions that I believe you've raised. I think he covered just about everything. Um, I think it's going to be an excellent initial an initial development to this overall plan. And as Mr. Ross said, this is the first project. This is the first project of what we hope are a lot of projects. And we hope that this type of residential development will spawn a lot of other mixed use development and realize the goals and visions of the plan. So I'm gonna vote yes. Mr. Clark. Well, I hate to follow that, that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've listened to the comments here, and, and, and if you've heard me here, I've, I've addressed a lot of them or tried to get the developer and, and staff here to address them as well. Um, when this applicant first brought this forth, I think one of the first things I told him was, you know, you've got a great website, you've got some great projects on there, but when this project gets approved in Germantown, I think it should be the project on your website, that this should be the um, forefront of Watermark, that this shouldn't just be uh, something like you've done before and, and I think we've gotten there. Uh, we, we've gone through, like Mr. Bacon said, we've gone through so many meetings uh, reviewing this thing. And uh, like I said, the demographics that, they, that you've presented on who's going to be in there, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned with crime in the area. And I, I hear uh, your sentiments out there as well. Um, the overwhelming thing to me was the, the 0 0.18 uh, kids per unit. I, I did a little math here. 310 units says 56 kids. If for some reason that was doubled in Germantown, which I don't, I don't see that the case. I mean, we're still talking about roughly 100 kids that would impact the school system, not 300 or 900 or whatever numbers that we're throwing out there. So, um, yeah, you know, it falls within the, the smart growth plan that we've, we've put forth. It, it fits on there perfectly. Um, I, I'm voting yes in favor of this. Mr. Hernandez. Um, I, I also am voting in favor of this. Uh, I certainly won't uh, go into the same uh, depth of uh, Rationale, but but I will say uh, to the developer and to the public that um, we put them through their paces, if you will. Um, uh, the phrase "going back to the drawing board" is is virtually no exaggeration. Uh, we did that a number of times with them, and they've been extremely diligent about coming back with just as uh, Commissioner Clark said, uh, a, a, the best product I think uh, that that they've probably ever done, and I think Germantown will be proud once that's complete. Alderman Owens. 
Good, good comments, all uh, my fellow commissioners. I, um, I'm, I've struggled with this. Um, I, I think, Mr. Bacon, I liked what you said. I, I believe we have a good, a very solid, a strong plan for this area to develop. Um, it's, it's contemplated uh, multifamily uses in this particular area. And uh, yes, there is a in slight increase in the density here. And, um, but, but we want density sometimes uh, takes a connotation as a bad word, and, and that's not the case here. We want this to be a vibrant, walkable area where you have neighborhood services available to the residents. Do I wish that we had had the mixed use component come first and develop first and show everyone this is what you're getting? Well, yes, I do, but the market, we, we can't dictate what the market is going to present. And, and I do believe that that'll be very shortly on the horizon. Uh, certainly my hope, and, and as long as we stick to the plan and the fundamentals of the plan, um, as, as we created it, then I think we'll be safe. And um, with that, I'll be voting yes. Mr. Saunders. It's not a whole lot more to add from what my fellow commissioners have said. I will be voting yes, and I would like to say that we did put the developer through the ringer. I've attended four subcommittee meetings. The first one was not only no, but hell no. You're not going to go that route, and it went from that point. Uh, and I think they've come back with a design that not only meets day one, but meets day two that will last and not be something that will you have to worry about as far as not holding its value. Uh, and I do feel like that the plan that was developed for this particular area brings this to light. And I agree that maybe this is not the best one to come forward first, but it is the first one. And I think the other mixed use will follow, and I think it'll be a whole lot better received in the long run. So that's the reason why I'll be voting yes. Chairman Harless. Uh, we used a term with um, Watermark. We challenged them to give us the wow factor. You remember that? And they kept saying, well, we think we've got the wow factor. And we kept saying, no, you got to go back because we want this to be the very best. Uh, one of the commissioners commented that we want this to be the, the pride of Watermark. We want it to be the pride of Germantown. We want everyone in Germantown to be proud of it. Uh, the comments that we heard from the audience, I uh, appreciate the comments, I appreciate the concern. Uh, hopefully um, Mr. Ross and his comments back let you know that there was a lot of due diligence that went on before this project got to this level. A lot of detail from the folks here in the front of me, uh, all of the staff that uh, worked for Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross himself, uh, Alderman, a lot of people have been involved in this and uh, I think we've got a very, very good product. With that, I'm voting yes. And we have unanimous approval for the Watermark properties. Welcome to Germantown. Now we move on to the, we're going warrants. to the warrants. What, just. So if we can, we'll wait just a second if, uh, so some of the folks can leave. Uh, when we finish these seven warrants, gentlemen, we will take a short break. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, opposed, these are the warrants. Uh, opposed motion for warrant number one to approve a warrant from section 23-758 to allow three civic spaces to be developed along the main street frontage of this development. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second, any questions? If not, call for the vote. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting to approve uh, the proposed motion number one, warrant <coughs> number one, to allow the three civic spaces I think this will actually create just an interesting design element along the main street. Mr. Clark? Uh, I'll be voting yes well, as well. Uh, I just think it's good for the development. Uh, like Mr. Bacon said, it, it 
creates kind of community in there and it, it meets the intent of the smart group, smart code. So I'll be voting yes. Mr. Hernandez. Uh, also voting yes. Uh, I think this is a um, good enhancement um, to the project. Alderman Owens. Agreed. As has been stated previously, we need more civic and green spaces within the community. This is going to help uh, enhance that vitality that we desire. And so I vote yes. Mr. Saunders. I echo my fellow commissioner's statements that uh, definitely brings more community to the, uh, and I'll be voting yes. Chairman Harless. Uh, I love more civic space in the city of Germantown, and I vote yes. With that, warrant one is approved. We go to warrant number two. Commissioner Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I propose motion number two to approve a warrant from section 23-774A to allow buildings along the east-west road through the site and internal to the development to have a maximum building setback of 68 feet from the back of the curb. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Questions? Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting yes to approve uh, the proposed motion number two, warrant number two. Um, I think that this uh, request uh, mirrors the intent of the small area plan for that, that east-west street and to create that east-west spine on the plan. Mr. Clark. Uh, I'll be voting yes also. Uh, just looking at the notes here on the, on the uh, plan, I think it's to allow room for a dog park and more community spaces as well. And I, I think that's great for the sense of community that the Smart Growth Plan is intended for. Mr. Hernandez. Also voting yes. I think the warrant is, uh, is warranted uh, based on the design of the property and the, uh, and the buildings thereon. Alderman Owens. I vote yes based on uh, good sound principles of urban design. Mr. Saunders. Voting yes uh, along the same lines as my fellow commissioners. Chairman Harless. And I also vote yes uh, due to the uniqueness of the land and safety factors. And with that, uh, warrant two is approved. We go to warrant three. Mr. Chairman, the proposed warrant number three, proposed motion three to approve a warrant from section 23-778B to allow frontage build out to be accomplished by the use of a street screen designed in an offset pattern that is not built on the same plane with the building facades along the primary street frontage. We have a second. Second. Motion and second questions. Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting to approve the proposed motion three. Um, I think having an offset pattern will just create some interest instead of having the same plane all the way down the street. Mr. Clark. I'll be voting yes also, uh, just for architecture purposes that we went back and forth on for numerous times just to get uh, the better look of the neighborhood feel there. So I'm voting yes. Mr. Hernandez. Also voting yes. I think the articulation um, allows for some um, enhanced character, if you will, to the um, streetscape. Alderman Owens. For, for those reasons stated previously, I vote yes. Mr. Saunders. For the reasons stated previously, I'm voting yes. Chairman Harless. I also vote yes, uh, again, to slow traffic and uh, prov provide more uh, opportunities to view the, uh, the complex. With that, the motion is approved, and we go to warrant number four. Mr. Chairman, the proposed motion for warrant number four is to approve a warrant from section 23-786-D2 to allow the 30% transparency to apply to only the mixed-use clubhouse building and exclude the big house and e-urban building type that are exclusive residential structures. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Questions? If not, please call the roll. Okay, quick yep. what, what is the percentage that they're trying to get here? Is it, can anybody? Is 27, it needs to be 30? 27 and 30 is the requirement. Right. Okay. And that's listed on each elevation as well. Okay. For the transparency. Hardy plank as well, right? Correct. And, and okay. 
No, no, that's, that's a different. That's the next one. That's the next one. That's the next one. Right. We're on number four. Oh, I'm and sorry. This is four. Yes. This for is the for the clubhouse. Okay. okay. Facilitated by the uh, units on top. Yep. So it's just it's just on the clubhouse building. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. That it meets the thirty percent requirement. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Who's voting? Mr. Bacon. Chairman, voting yes. Those motion warrant number four. Um, I think that uh, I think this is warranted for the residential structures. I think that from a privacy standpoint, I think it's necessary for the residential structures. Mr. Clark, uh, I'll be voting yes as well. Uh, Mr. Bacon uh, gave a good example there. Uh, it's kind of the forefront of the development there, and I think it'll look good coming into the. Uh, down Crestwood Hills Drive, so voting yes as well. Mr. Hernandez. Also voting yes uh, for the reasons so stated, previously stated. Alderman Owens. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. May I ask one question of staff? So, so just to make sure, we're talking about the transparency on the first floor of the clubhouse. Correct. And the reason for that was because they have a workout facility and they wanted some privacy, and, and that makes perfect sense to me, and so I vote yes. Mr. Saunders. I'll be voting yes, I think, for the mixed use uh, requirement of 30 percent uh, due to the fact that this is somewhat uh, outside that particular mixed use normality that we should approve it. So I'll be voting yes. Chairman Harness. And I also vote yes due to the privacy issue. With that, uh, warrant number four is approved and we move on to warrant number five. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the proposed motion number five, warrant number five, to approve a warrant from section 23-786D3 to allow the use of cementitious fiber, cementitious fiber cement, lap siding, and EFIS as a building, EIFS, as a building material within this development. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Questions? Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting to approve uh, this request. Um, I think technologically the, uh, the new uh, cement board, or the hardy plank board, is an excellent building material. It is difficult to use and to cut. And um, the uh, EFIS challenges have been solved relative to uh, some of the moisture issues. And I think it also just creates an opportunity for a lot of aesthetic variety in um, the building designs. Mr. Clark. I too will be voting yes in favor of this warrant. Um, I think Mr. Saunders said earlier that uh, we're, we're looking for something that looks good on uh, day one as well as day two and uh, these types of products hold up over time and, and would be beneficial for the use of the building. Mr. Hernandez. Also voting yes for, uh, for this warrant. Uh, in addition, I think to the reasons noted earlier, I think uh, it's a good complement with the other materials on the buildings. Alderman Owens. Yes, for those reasons just stated previously, and uh, I applaud actually the use and, and your willingness to work with us in, in modifying and continuing to change. Um, it's hard to design by committee, and I know we've given you a lot of input through that, so we appreciate that. Yes. Mr. Saunders. Since we're all architects up here, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I'll be voting yes. I, I, I do applaud you working with us as far as bringing the uh, EFAS up to the level which was not to be damaged uh, as easily. And I think taking all these into uh, perspective, I think it gives a good design. So I'm voting yes. Chairman Harless. I also vote yes. Uh, I'm glad to see the use of the building materials. And I think this is going to be a long term solution for us. So uh, warrant number five is approved. We move on to warrant number six. Mr. Chairman, the proposed motion number six, warrant number six to approve a warrant from section 23-792.b.2 and 23-793.8.3 to allow a driveway entrance that is 37.93 feet face of curb to face of curb to be located as shown on the site plan. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Questions? Yeah, can Mr. Ross, sir? reasoning behind that just real quickly that they need that warrant 
This is the driveway one? Yes, sir. Number, number six. Uh, I'll let Ms. Tuttle tackle that one. Okay. All right. So all of our drives into the development meet the standard. This is just for between the big house buildings where the garages face each other. Anything closer together causes issues with people being able to actually pull in or back out of their garage. So we submitted to staff multiple turning movements showing how cars get into their garage, and this is the tightest we can go. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Other questions? If not, please call the roll. Mr. Bacon? Mr. Chairman, I'm voting yes. Um, I believe the extra dis distance is necessary to move in and out of the garages, as described. Mr. Clark? I'll be voting yes as well. Uh, I think Ms. Tuttle explained perfectly uh, why they need this warrant, so I'm voting yes. Mr. Hernandez? Uh, also voting yes for the same reasons as Commissioner Clark. Alderman Owens? Yes, for the same reasons. Mr. Saunders? I think once the item was pointed out in our executive session that when you start limiting spaces of this nature, it starts to have an impact on where people park, which also in turn has an impact on how emergency vehicles get in and out. So taking that in consideration, I think this is warned and I'll be voting yes. Chairman Harless? I also vote yes due to the safety issue with this project and warrant number six is approved. We move on to warrant number seven. Mr. Chairman, the proposed motion number seven, warrant number seven, to approve a warrant from section 23-792-D6 to allow an additional 34 additional sur surface parking spaces over the required number of surface parking spaces for this site. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second questions. Please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, I'm voting to approve this warrant request. Um, I typically frown on a lot of additional parking, but I think in this instance, with this size development, that 34 additional spaces evenly distributed throughout the plan won't have a lot of impact. And just one quick comment. This is a lot of warrants. <laughs> we typically frown on this many warrants, but um, we, you know, smart code is set up to uh, facilitate this kind of activity to, you know, help, help facilitate plan challenges and help those, those types of plan issues um, work and become a reality. So it's a lot of warrants. Mr. Clark? Uh, real quick, I'll, I'll, first off, I'm going to approve this, yes. Uh, secondly, I just want to echo what you said about all the warrants. Um, as from what I understand, the smart code has these warrants in place that we're able to approve based on these, and everyone that we've had in here is, is it can be approved based on a warrant that's given. And so uh, I think it's just kind of a checks and balances type thing. So I'm, I'm with you. We're usually frown on these things, but uh, everything that we've had here seems to go along with this development and follows the uh, smart growth intent. Uh, we, we've asked for a lot of more, a lot more green spaces, civic spaces, setbacks and things like that to get more green space, then we turn around and ask for more parking spaces. So it's kind of a, a trade-off in my opinion. So uh, I'll be voting yes. Mr. Hernandez? Um, also voting yes. I think the, the um, additional 34 parking spaces are, are certainly uh, advisable. Um, I think it represents somewhere about 6 or 7% of the entire parking on the property. And um, I think having some extras uh, has the positive benefit of keeping people uh, from parking in no parking zones. Alderman Owens? I would, I would agree. Uh, I think the last thing we want is to, to build a, a product uh, and, and not have it parked adequately. And uh, we, we are at sort of a threshold here between urban and suburban development, and, and I know we're leaning towards more urban, but this still is, is suburban, I guess, in, in nature to some extent, and so we want to make sure that we're parked. And I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, this, the additional parking that came about was due to some of the design modifications that we made on the front of the buildings to move those to address the smart code that we wanted them to, which is buildings lining the street and addressing the street and embracing the street and having that uh, additional walkable. So uh, I don't know if that made sense, but I vote yes. Mr. Saunders? 
We voted yes for this uh, warrant. Uh, I tend to agree that uh, 34 spaces uh, properly spaced around the project will not be that noticeable. I think the biggest thing is is that in <clears throat> reality of the live, work, play, you probably would only have one car in a family, but since this is still somewhat of a uh, suburban area, uh, it does require more parking and that type of thing, so I, I, I'll be voting yes. Chairman Harless. And I vote yes for the reasons stated. With that, it is unanimous. All the warrants are approved, and the site plan, final plan is approved. And again, I welcome you to Germantown and look forward to a great, great wow apartment complex. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a uh, 10 minute recess, and then we will come back and talk about the new Germantown School.
Well, I, I saw Jody jump out. Of yeah, that's the reason where he went. I just wonder why. But, uh, the Chiefs there announced it. 63, 63 Poplar Wood Circle. Oh. South. Pop, Poplar and. Yeah. Poplar and. Uh, uh, out of the building now, standing at their house on the fire. Female having those coaches, but they don't even speak out. Evidently got it out. Well, they they all took out of here. I, you yeah. know, when I saw Jody go, I went, well, where's I, Jody going? And then I, I heard got, the sirens crank up. I respond with squad 41 when I'm available. So, oh. air truck was available. So I didn't worry about that one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to reconvene the Germantown Planning Commission. Mr. Ross, if you're prepared to make a staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Our final item tonight is the new Germantown Municipal School District Elementary School located at 3366 Forest Hill Irene Road. And their request is a, for a preliminary and final site plan approval for the new public elementary school. Uh, again, just to give everybody their bearings, we've got Poplar Pike, Forest Hill Irene, and Poplar's just off the screen. These are the two parcels that the school has purchased, uh, formerly known as the Brewer Schaefer property. Uh, the school is proposing a site plan that you see in front of you. This would be over a total of 38 acres, combination of two parcels that's in a residential estate one acre uh, zoning district. It is currently vacant. Uh, pursuant to 23204 in our zoning code, schools are allowed in the RE1 districts uh, with a use on appeal. The Board of Zoning Appeals granted that use on appeal on September 13th of this year. Additionally, prior to uh, submitting the Planning Commission application, the school district and their team met with the city's tree board and also had a sketch plan meeting for concept uh, to go over the concept and to troubleshoot any issues with the city's technical advisory committee uh, also on September 13th of this year. This project overall is 110,000 square feet of a K through five school and it also includes as a potential second phase of the project a 16,000 square foot central office building. The western portion of the site is going to be uh, left unbuilt. Uh, I'm sorry, the eastern portion. So this portion will be left unbuilt. Uh, the western portion uh, will include uh, areas that are associated with uh, playground and uh, circulation associated with the site. The uh, project does comply with minimum lot requirements for the RE1 district. The parking calculations are for 194 spaces that include the school and the second phase of the district office. Uh, 1.15 parking spaces per staff member, along with one space for every 200 square feet is what the code requires, and they do meet that requirement. Uh, additionally, they have uh, created through a uh, queuing system and drive system within the site a 306 car queuing capacity to help with movement off of Forest Hill Irene and managing both drop off and pick up at the elementary school. Uh, this does 
Uh, also meet the uh, TCA requirement for planning commission to review construction of new public facilities. Uh, TAC reviewed this project at the uh, meeting on October 11th and the planning commission subcommittee reviewed this project on the 25th of October. Uh, most of the issues discussed at the planning commission subcommittee have been addressed by the applicant who has been very diligent in working through these issues with city staff that include both uh, planning, engineering, public works, uh, fire, and police as it relates to this. Uh, engineering uh, has uh, been working with them and uh, A2H is both the lead uh, designer on the school project as well as a sub-consultant on the Forest Hill Irene widening project. And so that dovetails into the traffic circulation and they've also been working with Public Works and Fire to make sure that uh, water issues have been addressed as well as wellhead issues. Uh, clarification on the wetlands area that's in the southeast corner of the project has been added. Uh, we do know that uh, that is classified as a wetland and if anything does get close to that, they'll have to work with the Army Corps of Engineer on a specific 404 permit for that area. With parks, uh, this playground is not a public playground per se. Our uh, Shelby County schools that we acquired as part of the development of our school district all have associated parks and playgrounds with them, but this playground is being developed specifically for the school not separate from the school as part of a park, although park uses will certainly be applied as this site develops on. Uh, I know that the school district is working with the parks department to uh, develop those synergy items uh, so that they can uh, live together. Uh, police is still working with them on uh, servicing the area. We have a great partnership with GMSD and our police department with school resource officers, crossing guards, traffic management at all of our uh, existing schools and we will certainly uh, rely on that partnership with this school. Again, also going back to the 300 plus cars in the queuing, we hope that there won't be too many issues along Forest Hill Irene once the road project is done. Uh, this project, uh, and if you want elaboration on this brief statement that I'm about to give, I'm sure the applicant can do that, but this project will be bid out as uh, both a school project with an alternative to include the central office area, so it's our recommendation to have this uh, considered by the Planning Commission as a two-phase development uh, in the case that those bids don't come back in something uh, that uh, the school district wants to proceed with immediately and we discussed that at the uh, executive session. Uh, the conditions of approval that were discussed at the uh, subcommittee level were to provide pedestrian connections from playgrounds to sidewalks at the rear buildings as well as additional bike parking and the applicant has agreed to do that as well as following uh, this approval, the applicant is going to the Design Review Commission at the end of November for the site plan landscaping, signage, and uh, building materials that will be associated with it. And then following that, we will move forward with any uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman action that needs to be taken to get them to uh, turning dirt early in the spring. The applicant is here tonight. Uh, they'll be happy to answer any other questions. This is a portion of the landscaping plan that will be seen by the Design Review Commission uh, at their subcommittee on Thursday night and at their full meeting on uh, the last Tuesday of November. These are uh, architectural drawings as uh, they develop moving towards that DRC committee meeting and uh, Again, applicants here for any questions as it relates to the site plan and civil engineering issues that uh, this planning commission might have. Commissioner's questions of staff. Would the applicant like to make a presentation? 
While the applicant comes up, I would like to uh, compliment uh, both the school district, uh, the school district's team, as well as economic and community development staff and other city staff, including uh, fire, uh, public works, and police on working collaboratively on this project uh, to bring it here to you tonight and to also move it forward into fruition so that uh, we can all uh, build our first school here in Germantown. Amen. Good evening, Josh Cathy, 2576 Hollyhock Drive, Germantown, Tennessee. David Smith, 1316 Riverwind Cove, Germantown, Tennessee. And Mr. Ross hit the key highlights. I just wanted to bring a couple more things uh, to the commission's uh, attention. We did meet with the neighbors uh, at Riverdale. We figured that was the best place to bring them so they could see what we do when we build an addition in Germantown. Uh, we met with the neighbors to hear concerns and go over the plans with them so they're up to date and up to speed on how we are progressing. Um, there were a few questions from neighbors regarding uh, landscaping buffers between our property and theirs as well as lighting plans. The majority of the questions that we got and concerns that we heard regarded traffic on Forest Hill Irene. Uh, we shared with them what city engineering shared with us and the plans for Forest Hill Irene. Uh, and that was, that, that was the majority of what we heard about at that uh, meeting from the residents that attended. Um, for our part, uh, as Mr. Ross pointed out, what we have done to do our best to try to alleviate traffic on Forest Hill Irene is bring as much site circulation, bring as much circulation onto the site as possible uh, to get the traffic off of Forest Hill Irene. As he mentioned, we have room for up to 306 cars to queue, uh, and that is a tremendous amount of the school traffic that we would see. Um, if we had a school of six to 700 students, not all of those are going to be car riders. You will have some uh, that ride the bus. We typically have 20% to 30% of our students who ride buses. Um, so we, we've done a great deal. I just wanted to point out to the commission that we've invested a significant amount on the site to bring traffic off of Forest Hill Irene, and we have met with those neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Caffey. Mr. Smith. I just want to echo what Mr. Ross said in thanking the staff for working with us. We've come a long way in a short time and could not have done it without them. And I believe you all have heard all the facts and figures regarding this, so I'm available to answer any questions. Commissioner's questions? Oh, Mr. Manuel, would you like to? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add to it. And my name is Jason Manuel. I'm the superintendent of the schools. I'd like to thank all of you for uh, really taking the time to meet with me during your subcommittee meeting and Mr. Harless to, to come meet with us. Uh, I think the biggest concern for all of us is what's going to happen as the road's being built and how are we going to deal with that transition. And so as we're going through the zoning process right now, we would like to reiterate that it's not going to happen all at once when we talk about the numbers of students coming to the schools. We are looking at a fourth grade band or fifth grade band that are going to stay at their home schools because we don't want to move families and kids that are at those schools right now. We're not going to rip off the band and say you have to go to the new school. So they'll be allowed to continue uh, at their existing schools. So in this year of transition where we're looking at the road being built, this is not going to be a K-5 school from the start. So we are looking at it either being K-4 or K-3. So that should also, on top of uh, the traffic solutions that we have, reduce some of those numbers that we're looking at too in, in our transition. And uh, like we talked about during subcommittee meeting, we're open to do anything to try to pull the traffic off the road, coming in both entrances, meeting both ways, and we'll have staff that are controlling the flow through the campus but we are going to do our best to try to get the traffic off the road. Thank you. Commissioners, questions for the applicant? So, Go ahead. Mr. Manuel, without getting into a lot of the data, sure. uh, Mr. Babian and others uh, from the neighborhoods uh, next to the Forest Hill Heights uh, small area plan, there were a number of questions raised in the previous application about the uh, impact to existing city infrastructure. And I know that you've done an exhaustive analysis. Yes. You've had the small area plan. Obviously, that's a long lens mm -hmm. of a lot of development and who knows what you know, may ultimately take place from the standpoint of rooftops and children generation. But to answer the concerns about the impact of residential development in that area, you've exhaustively studied. Yes, and I'll be glad I can give you a brief a overview brief, and not, yeah. not go through that, <laughs> the detail that I went through with you. 
Um, looking across the city of Germantown, we've calculated that we produce 0.31 students per household. Uh, and that's across all three uh, levels of school, so K through five, six through eight middle school, and then of course the high school. So if we're looking at 1,400 uh, units that are being added to the city, and that's a rough number that we threw out, we'd approximately be looking at 200 new elementary school students, 100 uh, plus middle school students, and about 200 uh, high school students that would be produced uh, from those new residences. And we've taken that in, into consideration when we start our zoning. So know that we are gonna leave ourselves a cushion of over 200 students for the developments that, that's happening in this part of the city for our new elementary school. But at the end of the day, we've built the biggest school that we can with the money that we have, uh, trying to accommodate. And uh, there's no guarantee that we won't have to build more in the future, but we have done our best to, to plan for the, that current growth. Good. Thank you. Commissioner. My question is more for the public, and maybe this is uh, for Mr. Ross or someone. Uh, the, the timeline on the road going in there for sale, I know that's a concern to a lot of citizens. <clears throat> Uh, if someone could elaborate on that. I'm going to ask Mr. Gwaltney. Uh, he is a city engineer and is the chief project manager for the Forest Hill Irene project to uh, talk about that. finishing up the design, getting it out to bids. We are hoping to break ground late fall of 2018 with approximately a 12 to 18 month time frame for construction. <coughs> Commissioner. What's your time frame for starting construction? It, it, it's approximate, so uh, we're looking to go to bid this uh, February or March, uh, and then that's when we would be breaking ground once we go to bid, and we're looking at the school opening in 1920. Other questions? Uh, Mr. Manuel, <coughs> I'd like to thank you for sharing a lot of information in executive sessions, subcommittees, uh, because I think it gave all of us a better awareness of where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish, especially with the road construction and also knowing, and you might just touch on this, <clears throat> the flexibility that you've got in case the school builds out. Yes. Um, so we talk about optimal and ma maximum capacity, uh, and those are two different numbers that we throw out. How, the state really limits how many students we can put per classroom with the teacher. But we have built this school with a, a capacity of 815 for that maximum capacity, but there's even still more room for growth. Not that we would want to do that, but there are activity room spaces that we could use for uh, maps instruction, which are music or art instruction in those spaces. So we could go beyond that. Uh, but based on our demographer's work, and we hired an outside demographer, for, uh, from South Carolina to come in and do the prediction of, of how we're going to grow, we think that we have capacity to deal with, with the numbers in the city, but we do have more space in our schools to deal with that. We also have the ability, because we have non-residents that are attending, uh, uh, Riverdale is our largest non-resident school, uh, that we have slowly been dwindling those numbers. We can speed that process up. We call it, call it throttling up and down depending on the growth of the city. So that's another area with zoning that we can also control the numbers of students in our schools. Questions? Very good. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this project? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to this project? Please come forward. Edgar Baby in 3580 Crestwind Drive. Oh, I am for the school project. Thank you. I would have loved to see it behind <coughs> me, but it wasn't the best for the citizens because my kids rode the bus for an hour every morning go to Germantown Elementary. I didn't want to see that happen to the rest of the kids at Germantown. My one concern is, well, there's, I got three concerns. The first concern, the pictures I've seen of the school, there's a lot of glass in the school. Have we designed safe rooms in case there's tornadoes? Because in the tornado drill, the kids are supposed to go out in the hallways. 
And what I can see was just glass everywhere. So that's a big concern I have because we've had tornadoes come through this area. So that's, that's my first concern. The second, uh, this is zoned RE1. Does RE1 allow for office buildings? Uh, I know it allows for schools, but does it allow for office buildings? I mean, if the, if the school building was connected, that would be separate, but this is a separate building what I can see in the drawing. I think we're gonna have to look into that one. Okay, so that, that would be good. Uh, the third thing is, there are a bunch of fire hydrants in the wooded area up there. I don't know if you know, there's a, there's a water main there because back in the 70s, there was a subdivision plan that went under and there are fire hydrants back there. So it may save a couple of dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babian. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to the project? Please come forward. Uh, Patricia Cooper, 8959 Jenna Road. Um, I, I'm not really in opposition of the project, but I had a question on, I live on Jenna, so are there any changes that are gonna happen on Jenna or Forest Downs? Uh, we're the two main streets right there off of Forest Hill Irene that would be uh, affected. I know I've had people surveying out in front of my home. I happen to live at the very end of the cove and we get a lot of people that come down there, turn around. I have a lot of drainage issues down there, so I'm concerned about, um, there's a, a large culvert there uh, at the very end of the street. I'm just worried about, you know, extra water that may end up down by me. Um, are we gonna have curbs put in? Is there any changes that are gonna happen uh, on those streets right there? Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak in opposition to this project? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. Uh, Karen Hartridge, 3369 Forest Hill, Irene, and I'm not opposed to the project, but I do have questions uh, because my house is directly across the street from where the school will be. Um, what is the improvement of the road looking like as far as the houses across the street, are we going to be losing any land? And then what is the, I guess, projected impact of the road widening on us for the 12 to 18 months? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to, we'll try and answer a lot of these questions with one uh, fell swoop. Yes, ma'am, come on. Not really in opposition. In Jamie Pekunko, um, 9318 South Romano. Um, but I wanted to know how the queuing is going to work, where the in and out is on it. And uh, my question, is the queuing that purple line that goes around the office building that's not going to be there and goes down through the yellow? Is I, I just want to know where the in and where the out is. Well, well thank you. Other questions? Okay, we'll see if we can answer some of them. Mr. Ross, do you want to start? Let Mr. Smith start with uh, the last question okay. first. Queuing of the... Uh, Queuing of the flow, yes, sir. Um, I apologize, I need to turn this way because I'm left-handed to use the laser pointer. Uh, all of the, the little colors along here represent cars. The, the site is designed around having two entrances, one here and one down here. Uh, this entrance primarily will be for bus traffic and then for traffic getting back to the central office building. The, the entrance down here will be the primary private car entrance where we anticipate approximately two-thirds of the school population entering through this entrance, one-third obviously through the other one. And so the, the private car entrance brings cars around, up, and then down and through. The yellow cars uh, represent the, the maximum length of a loading unloading zone that the school could uh, functionally operate with staff while the red, green, and blue ones represent cars just sitting there. The uh, purple cars at the top were, uh, are also cars that would be waiting to pick up children. This was uh, laid in there as a method of showing maximum use of the space and, and use of the 
drives all of the, even if the building is built in a separate second phase, all of the infrastructure will be constructed as part of the initial phase. So this road and, and this circulation would be available. Uh, so this would be an additional queuing of parents with a, a staff member here merging the two traffic flows together to allow for continued flow through there. So the primary function would be from the south and around and out with the yellow cars being the ones picking up children and, and the purple ones are if we need to as a way of adding more capacity uh, to bring more cars in and have a staff member here directing flow. Mr. Smith, let me follow up. Uh, are we going to allow left-hand turns in the afternoon off the southern exit? The, the school district is open to that. Uh, they're open to, um, we, we've, we've done a design, we've come up with an approach, and then we're going to continue to refine that as the school functions. And there, there are two lanes leaving the school. One, can, one a dedicated right, a dedicated left, so that uh, for departures, if that's more efficient, then the school district is open to that. Very good. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You want to take a couple of the other ones? I'm going to turn the, uh, the questions related to the Forest Hill Irene improvement over to Mr. Gwaltney. Also, the Forest Brook and Jenna questions, too. Yes, sir. Uh, specifically on the houses across Forest Hill from the school, you're talking about the existing Forest Brook subdivision. That existing curb and gutter line is not intended to move. Uh, so no further right of way is needed beyond that curb line. It doesn't mean there may be some disruption in that area during construction, but as far as the, the final curb line, it's gonna be right where it is now. Um, questions on Jenna, as far as you were asking if curb, if I understood you right, were curb and gutter going to be installed on Jenna? Is that what your question was? David, do you? Um, I'll, I'll stand this way and not point at the, the picture. We're going to have detention on site. Uh, as far as I understand with the Forest Hill Irene Road Project, there would not be any improvements on Jenna or Forest Downs. Uh, our detention on site and our, our uh, shaping of the site, we're actually going to be shifting the ridge lines or, or the drainage basins for where water contributes to the flow down Jenna because what the, sorry, I got a point. Um, you, the area is right here and then it comes down and goes under the road and across. We're, we're gonna be shifting the ridge line so that more water that comes that way right now goes to the northwest rather than to the southwest off the site. So we'll be reducing the flow uh, off the southwest corner of the site just because we're shifting it so that more would um, leave off the northwest after th going through a detention pond. So you're saying my situation should improve? We'll have less water leaving our site off the southwest corner that would go down Jenna once we're done than what happens today because we're going to be uh, detaining it and then sending it to the northwest. So we'll have less leaving our site. As far as curb and gutters on Jenna, I mean, the new curb and gutter for Forest Hill Irene at those intersections will go around the radiuses on onto those intersections but not extend further uh, the length of the street is there anything else related to the road length of construction time it's hard to tell right now but we're anywhere from 12 to 18 months No, it's going to be two lanes in each direction with a median. But I mean, once construction starts? Uh, 
the phasing hasn't been worked out yet, but it, there will be two-way traffic available. I would say, I would add to that too, with the length of road that's being improved, you know, the impact in front of you isn't going to be the entire 12 to 18 months, but it will be 12 to 18 months for the length of the road, just moving up and down. But uh, based on the uh, school's timeline, our priority is the improvements in front of the school. So there is that, uh, uh, tangential benefit to being across the street from one of the city's major priority projects. Did we answer all the questions? What about the ad building? Do we know that? I would say that we'd need to research that before giving a, uh, a final answer. Mr. Smith. If I could, the, uh, the section that deals with Use on appeal references uh, municipal uses and is uh, the way that we read that in preparing our Board of Zoning Appeals application was that uh, municipal uses were allowed as use on appeal within the RE1 zoning. And as this is the central office building for the school system, we saw that as a municipal use. It doesn't list it as uh, any more detail as to what a municipal use is, but that any municipal use was uh, allowed uh, based on use on appeal. That's the way we interpreted that. Thanks. Commissioner yeah. Harle Chairman Harless, yeah. once again, compliments to a stellar ECD staff. Uh, Ms. Pounder pulled up the BZA application from the use on appeal and noted that the municipal offices for the school district was part of their use on appeal. So not only uh, is Mr. Smith correct in his uh, uh, review of the code allowing those municipal uses, but they included the office as part of their use on appeal in their application to the BZA uh, in September. Very good. So I think that answers the question. Have we uh, covered, I think we've covered everything. So uh, one last chance, does anybody have any other comments regarding this appl applicant and application? Yes, ma'am. Uh, could question. you come? Could you come up? Uh, just a quick question. The office building is going to be what? I, I've I lost that. It's the it's administration for building for the Germantown Municipal School System. Okay, for all the schools. For all the it's schools. It's going to be located that's, that's on that correct. property. Right now they're in a leased space over at CareFor, and they would like to get where they can have their own space. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Commissioners, questions? Do we have a motion, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the subcommittee... Subdivision Site Plan Subcommittee met on October 25th, 2017, and recommended approval of the project subject to the information requested per the staff comments. This evening, the proposed motion is to approve a two phase preliminary and final site plan for all site infrastructure improvements and a new GMSD public elementary school. Germantown Municipal School District Elementary School Phase 1 and a District Administrative Office Building Phase 2 subject to the Commission's discussion, conditions of approval, and staff comments in the staff report and the plans and documents filed with the application. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Questions? If not, <clears throat> please call the roll. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Chairman, just wanted to make a couple of quick comments. Um, I was honored to have participated on the site selection committee uh, that was organized by Mr. Jason Manuel, uh, the school district superintendent and his staff. Um, I'll say that uh, there were quite a few representatives that participated in that process, uh, fire, police, a number of commissions, uh, city staff, a lot of uh, school board members, uh, a lot of people participated, and uh, 
I think we started with 19 sites, Mr. Manuel, is that correct? We started with 19 sites spread all over the city. We went through a very rigorous process, a uh, very organized process by Mr. Manuel and his staff, uh, and we looked at numerous uh, conditions relative to distilling uh, the process, the site selection process, down to three sites. Um, and it was included lots of things, safety, developability, um, quality of the location, traffic infrastructure, uh, support infrastructure, and all of those things. And so I just want to applaud Mr. Manuel and his staff for a very rigorous process. Um, I think we ended up with three excellent sites. The committee, for the record, did not make the final selection. That was the school district and the school board made that selection out of the three. So I think that uh, based on that rigor, uh, this is an excellent site and an excellent location that's been chosen. So uh, I, th I like the plan. I think the plan respects the site. There's a lot of ground to be able to use. There's plenty of, of ability to expand and possibly do things to the east of this plan. Who knows what that might be. But um, I think from the standpoint of its relationship to the existing neighborhoods, you know, one of the things that we looked at, and we looked for large pieces of property, this is 38 acres, and um, this gave the ability for the school district to push the building back off the street. So uh, it's well off the street. There's the preservation of a lot of trees out front. There's a big tree right in front of the building, I think is a 55 inch caliper oak tree. But um, instead of having a small site and having queuing and parking and traffic right up on the street and right up on the existing neighborhood, that was one of the qualifiers that we looked at. So I think it does an excellent job in respecting that. I like the architecture. And uh, I think that uh, it's pretty interesting. This must be the most queuing of any school in the system by far. So uh, excellent job. I'm voting yes. Mr. Clark? What more can I say? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Mr. Hernandez. Um, also voting yes. I, I would like to just take a moment. I know I'm uh, perhaps stepping beyond uh, the scope of this committee, but uh, Commissioner uh, Owens just handed me this Memphis Association, Area Association of Realtors report for October 2017. And, and I don't think it's any coincidence that the uh, average increase in year-to-date sales of existing homes and new homes in Germantown uh, compared to the same period last year is at least double any other community in Shelby County. And I can't help but believe that a large portion of that significant increase is a function of and a result of the Germantown Municipal School District. So again, I'm voting yes. Alderman Owens? Comments. Yes. Mr. Saunders? That was simple, yes. <laughs> Chairman Harless. You know, we're blessed in this community to have the best school system in the state. And that's not just us saying that, but uh, they've received numerous awards for being uh, the highest uh, achievement in, in the state of Tennessee. And so you wonder why we're getting developers wanting to come here. It's because they know where there's good schools, people will follow. It's a natural evolution, and we're gonna see more growth here because of the great school system that we have. Uh, we're fortunate to have great leadership in the school system, and um, I think this new school uh, reflects that, and I'm pleased to vote yes. With that, we have unanimous approval for our brand new Germantown Elementary School. We wish you the very best. Mr. Manuel, Mr. Smith, let me make a comment. Uh, if you decide to have a phase two on the administration building and you make any changes to the plans, you'll have to come back before us. So just FY, FYI. Best of luck. Uh, I would also encourage you to communicate as much as you can to the neighbors and the community at large on how this new school system is coming along. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, do we have any old business? I know it's kind of late. Any new business? If not, we stand adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. Appreciate it. <laughs>